Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs, episode 431 for Wednesday, March 15th, 2023. Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain here at businessbrain.show, where we are using our business brains to dissect, decipher, understand the world around us, our worlds at home, our worlds at our businesses, pretty much everywhere, because we find that our business brains are valuable for more than just business. But business matters too. Sponsors for this episode include Headspace, where you can go get Headspace, try Headspace free for 30 days by going to headspace.com slash brain 30, brain 30. We'll talk more in depth about that shortly. For now, here in Austin, Texas, for South by Southwest, I'm Dave Hamilton. And I'm still out here in Lafayette, California. I'm Shannon Jean. How are how you doing out there? I, I'm doing all right. I, you know, I, I, I was in Las Vegas last week for Podcast Movement, which was a, a great show. I had a, a, some good stuff there that I'm still sort of deciphering that we'll probably include into our workflows. It is good to attend the Echo Chamber every now and then. It, you know, yeah. just to, yeah, to, if, if I was in the echo chamber all the time, it would, it would, life would be boring. Uh, but it is, it is good to attend these, these shows that just sort of open things. I think you would appreciate podcast movement. We should, we should talk about Probably. that. Yeah, 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 I'd like yeah. to. I mean, we, we've, we've done a number of shows about the benefits of attending uh, conferences and trade shows yeah. uh, up at businessbrain.show. And I, I, uh, I do agree. I, I had one this weekend. It was a little different. But uh, I was a delegate for a, a, a political party that, since we don't talk politics on this show, it sure. doesn't matter. But it was fascinating in itself and uh, kind of an echo chamber like you talked about uh, in some ways, but other ways uh, always get you, you, you get to meet new people, make new contacts. And uh, I think they're highly valuable. And learn some things. Yeah, for you sure. Do. Oh, yeah, definitely learn a lot. So South by Southwest is, we've talked about it uh before on this show, it's really three, technically four conferences that happen sort of overlap and also in succession, rapid succession in a compressed period of time. And the one that is happening right now as we record this is wrapping up is what they call South by Southwest Interactive. It is the show at which uh, back in, I think, 2008, Twitter made its debut to the world Oh. And and really like catapulted into the, the the name brand, the household name brand that that we know of today, because it was a perfect place for that technology. We didn't really have any any social networks that were were worthwhile at the time. And here you are with all of these people that we'll call influencers or at least technical, technically uh, uh, savvy journalists and marketers and and all of that. Wanting to know where everybody's going, what everybody's doing, especially after hours, but also even with the sessions. And so Twitter launching here, getting everybody to sign up, super smart. It became a moment. South by Southwest Interactive, since then, and really all the way through its, uh, its history, has just sort of reacted to and shined a light on what's happening in the world today. Very emerging okay. stuff, right? So sometimes that's social movements. Sometimes it's technological movements. Sometimes it's a combination of both. I went to two sessions this morning and I noticed a, a massive dichotomy. And that alone was like, okay, wait, there's something going on here because we've got people on one side of an issue saying that this thing is worthless and you don't want to, uh, you know, you, you want to stay away. And then literally 20 minutes later, a session where it is like touting all the benefits and why the world is going to move this way. And it's all about Web3, uh, blockchain and the metaverse. Okay. The, the first se and I, so I think there's something here that we as business owners need to pay attention to. Uh, the, the first session was an interview with, it was called Popping the Web3 Bubble. And it was an interview mm, nice. with, yep, with Molly White, who is a software engineer, a uh, longtime Wikipedia editor, like since she was like 13 years old, and now maintains the website Web3 is going just great, which is a sarcastic title, <laughs> right? <Yes. laughs> 
And and so the session with with her was all about how we need to be careful of of you know buying into the hype. Don't buy into the hype of Web three. Don't buy into yeah. the hype of blockchain. I haven't seen a good use case for it. You know, I mean, and and there are nuances to it. She is not just like categorically against it. She has very articulate, specific reasons and arguments and examples of why, for the most part, she doesn't see value here. But but there are certain things where she's like, well, no, okay, that was actually a good use of this. You know, like there there might be hope, but there's no practical uses hope. in today's world hope but not hype hope but not yeah yes keep keep the hope avoid the yeah. hype yeah that's that's okay. a great way of saying it yeah. then i saw a session literally 20 minutes later um called the the metaverse mindset for web3 oh, yes. <laughs> ai and the future of business now this was a keynote so like i am and, and this is intentional here at south by southwest i am very much influenced by the uh the curators the people at south by southwest who decide what is going to appear on stage right like lots of people apply to speak and they choose what they want the conference to be about by selecting the speakers that's which is okay. fine I, sure, I get it sure. you know they've done fairly well over the years at shining i mean they are held accountable by you know the attendees who buy tickets so so they're, they're not just pulling this out of thin air they're saying what are people going to want to hear about so I, I I will acknowledge that, but this session was was a keynote by uh, Sandy Carter. Sandy is net currently the as an SVP at Unstoppable Domains, uh, driving uh, Unstoppable Domains whole digital identity technology. So she is like digital identity being your blockchain proven confirmed actual identity on the web where you're on the on the web three where you okay. can you get to control who you are what information people can see about you and with third-party proof right so got it a great example if you want one of what a blockchain is actually really good for right she was previously yeah. a vp for the public sector at amazon web services uh it, you know she has she is a serious player in the tech emerging tech market. Okay. So here's these two people who have, I, I would have loved to have seen a conversation between the two of them. Together. Yeah. That's yeah. what they should have done. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. Um, but it was just fascinating to experience this. And so, you know, Sandy, I, I think we need to not buy into the anti hype either. Uh, okay, it's sure. really, I get that. it's really yeah. easy for, I don't, I, I wanted to have this conversation today because I, I think my mindset on this is going to evolve. I mean, this is like, I haven't even had time to sleep after seeing these sessions, but I have, I have one business that's sort of related to blockchain stuff ish, not really, but it's close enough, right? It's in that yeah. world. But by and large, everything else that I do, I've, I've kind of stayed away from it. It's easy to, for us, especially us, you know, old guys, to say, ah, that's new stuff. It's worthless. It's, you know, and, and because we don't already use it and therefore we're not experts at it, it's very easy to, to believe, to choose to believe the anti hype, right? The, the right. first yeah, session sure. that I saw, I right? It. It's like, oh, yeah. I don't know anything about that. That person's telling me I don't need to know anything. Yeah. And so, great. It's I'm like walk. It's like watching a documentary, and uh, one side convinces you, "Oh, absolutely, that happened that way." And then the next day, you watch another documentary, right. and you're like, "Oh, wow, that happened. That actually didn't happen that way. It happened this way." You right. Know? And uh, so they're both persuasive. It, yeah, well, but confirmation bias is yep. a, is a persuasive thing, and sure. and so by not being involved in this kind of business, it's easy for me to sit down and believe. The naysayers, right? Like, yeah. uh, you know, there's yeah. there's enough examples of bad things that have happened. Don't bother with this. It's stupid, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Watching this thing by Sandy Carter from Unstoppable Domains, all the pro Web3 stuff, there is stuff happening here. Um, right. She told a story about a friend's daughter who just had a birthday, I think 11 years old or something. And she asked her what she wanted for her birthday and, and a, a, as a technolo technolo technologist, I'm embarrassed to say that I don't really even know what the heck she was talking about. But 
she, instead of saying, oh, I want clothes or I want this, she asked for virtual dollars to be spent on Roblox, which is oh, a, yeah. Yeah, 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 well, but like, that's a thing. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. Huge. Forever 21, the clothing brand uh, is using Roblox to do all kinds of things and really bringing the experience there. It This is uh, there. There is there is some fascinating stuff. IWC watches on their website has a Web3 manifesto. <laughs> like, like this, <laughs> this tells yeah. me that there's stuff happening. Something's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. I, you know, um, one thing that really, she talked, you know, she's a, she's an excellent public speaker, which I love. Uh, she told us the five things that she was going to tell us. And then she told us those five things in, you know, in a little more detail. One, two of the things really jumped out at me. One people are the center of the metaverse. That was the, the the one that really resonated with with this whole, you know, where is AI going to me? And I, I think the killer app for AI is a social network of sorts, right? Connecting okay. people. So when she said that, it was like, okay, yeah, there's something to this. And then on the on the blockchain side of it, digital identity is a human right. Not it which means digital identity is is the term that we use for your identity that's that's confirmed on the blockchain. But this whole thing about a human right is is really hmm. saying your data is yours to control, not someone else's, Google's, you know, yeah. Facebook's, right? So there's some there's a there there, folks. Yeah, I, I think you it's probably somewhere in the middle. You yeah, know of what course. I mean? it, it, but it's, don't it, ignore it, this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you sh anyone should ignore it, especially uh you know, we're coming up on a time where there's a huge influx of people entering the work young people entering the workforce that I would call digital first. They grew up Yes. With, their first computer was their was a phone, right? And uh they they kind of but everything is mobile. They bypassed the stuff we went through where it was transitioned to laptop and all this kind of stuff. Well, I mean, and, and, yes, you're right. Phone for mobile first is, yeah, is perhaps first. a good way but, of but saying also, it. Yeah. Cause I grew up on, digital it, first. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. one of the weird 50, you know, 50 somethings I, who grew up online. Which, yeah, so, but, but I yes. think that like my, my daughter asked me when she was in high school, she asked me this question. I'll never forget. She said, dad, why did you have a computer before the internet? Yeah. Why would you have one? And and I was uh, I was shocked. It's like, well, of course we did these things, but you know, it was so isolated and and siloed from one another and her whole experience uh mobile or otherwise was all uh uh you know, online. So it is a fascinating discussion about the metaverse and virtual and this, but Bef I do want to talk about a very timely issue that's hitting us hard in reality today, and that's bank failures and how they might impact your business. You know, we talk here a lot on the show about self-awareness and learning about ourselves and, and how that applies to our business brains so that we can have the proper perspective on stuff. And it's so easy to get caught up in doing things that we're not thinking about things. And and that's not just true about business. It's true about our lives in general, taking a minute to chill and focus and sort of let our thoughts process and go is super helpful. And Headspace, our sponsor here helps that happen in a fantastic way through guided meditations, mindfulness practices, breathing and calming exercises, and so much more. The Headspace tools can help reduce anxiety, they can help boost your mood, and help you sleep better. Headspace combines scientifically proven benefits of meditation and mindfulness with modern practices through their experienced meditation teachers. Headspace has stuff for no matter what you need. If you want like a quick on-the-go meditation for a few minutes, like they've got like a three-minute meditation meditation, uh, they've also got much longer meditations. Their teachers are all, they're all great. I, I mean, I have, you know, some that I, I kind of gravitate to when I use it, but I, everyone that I've tried has, has brought me something. They've got the world's largest library of content with over a thousand hours of clinically proven mental health exercises. 
Headspace has definitely helped me and more than 100 million people worldwide, and they can help you too. Listen up. You do not want to miss this because we've arranged something special here. For a limited time, all of you can try Headspace free for 30 days by going to headspace.com slash brain 30 for 30 days. You won't find this offer anywhere else. You must use our link, H-E-A-D-S-P-A-C-E dot com slash brain 30 to unlock all of Headspace free for 30 days. This is not something they normally do. Headspace.com slash brain 30. And our thanks to Headspace for doing what they do and for sponsoring this episode. All right. You said something about banks, my friend. <laughs> I did. I hate banks, but they are, <laughs> they are a necessary to be fa- evil. To be fair, uh, uh, I want to make sure I get her name right. Yeah, Molly White, the, the anti-blockchain you know, blockchain yeah. person, she acknowledged that you know she and the blockchain proponents both agree on the problem to be solved. Like, we don't like the banks. So yeah. we just have different solutions uh, proposed. <laughs> so, correct. Correct. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and I, I, I get it. You know, you have to do banks, but like when I'm thinking of, you know, cash and different things. So, you know, this last week uh, we had a bank failure, Silicon Valley bank. You really that, had three you know, bank failures, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And led that, that kind of first, you know, there was uh, one, one smaller one and then, and so SVB, and then uh, now they're looking at maybe first Republic having some issues. Um, and I'm getting phone calls and emails from people I have financial relationships with telling me we're okay. Our bank is fine. Your investments are okay. Even my, you know, marketplaces that I sell on, have emailed saying, Hey, we don't keep our customer deposits there because my wife who runs a Etsy business, mm. you know, Etsy was worried on Friday that, Hey, we can't distribute funds. So it got me thinking, you know, even if you don't bank at one of these banks, how does, could it impact your business? Right. Uh, because it could be a, a, a good customer that can't pay you. Right. If their, yeah. their bill is due and all of a sudden their cash, even if, the, okay, so we had this, it could have been much worse. The FDIC stepped in and said, look, we're going to make depositors whole. That's a whole other which, discussion. Which is, right. I, like, what does that mean for the for the insurance that they say they provide ver- versus the insurance that yes. they actually provide? I mean, it's supposed to be Correct. 250K per depositor, and they just yes. confirmed that they'll cover way more than that way more but how long it takes to get that money is really in question right yeah but but uh, the, the fact that the the u.s government has said yes oh I, it's I, I, it's backed like that yeah. that changes what's Everything. the expectation for the next time i don't know well, man i think I, they were concerned know. and yeah i followed it pretty closely over the weekend and yeah. a few people that i i listened to and they're on twitter and everything else talking about they the FDIC had to do this because they did it with the big four banks in, in, in 2008. States. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And so if you don't protect the regional banks, depositors, oh. not investors, not shareholders, not executives, they're, they're not protecting their investments. They're protecting depositors because if, if you don't protect depositors, everybody will leave the community and regional banks and go into the big four. And what it becomes is you know there are no local and regional banks and i gotta say if you have to deal with the bank and you do local banks are just heads and tails typically better because you have a person more personal relationship you can actually have a human yeah yeah a community relationship when you walk in the door somebody knows your name it's it's just easier to get things done and easier to solve a problem when you have one which inevitably is going to happen yeah yeah you so, will have a problem and and, and yeah yeah it, it yeah. when you can have when the problem starts and you at that moment have the ability to have a conversation with uh, a human who knows you it's night huge. and day yeah night and day you, you if you do not have a personal relationship with a banker that can help you immediately after this show is over you must find one and at a new bank or your bank or whatever, because if you wait until you have a problem, like something happens like this, if you're a first Republic, uh, you know, bank, bank them, and all of a sudden they're in trouble and you don't have anybody to call, 
that's a major problem. So, so you, you have to have somebody in your phone that you can dial up just to get through the red tape, you know, yeah. and uh, that's worth your, the effort, you know, at all times. So my first tip is you must have more than one bank. You know, the, even though you may love this one bank, but you need to have another one. And if you bank, you could go with one of the big fours and keep your cash reserves in there or something like that. Um, but you, you you have to do it. I like it. Uh, and, and, you know, the other thing is a lot of this is about communication. If you if you research the Silicon Valley Bank thing, they they communicated very, very uh, poor you know in a poor manner what was going on and people freaked out and you know on thursday 42 billion dollars was taken out of their bank yeah and on on friday morning they they were insolvent so you know everything's electronic people are moving money quick 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 they're all freaking out and they they didn't communicate very well when they dropped this bomb on wednesday that they needed to go raise or they wanted to raise a couple you know billions of dollars yeah. so you as a business owner, need to take that lesson and communicate. If you start having these problems or you think you're going to be impacted, who are your most important suppliers? And if it's going to impact you, your ability to pay them on time or what they're expecting, you have to be proactive and let them know what's going on. Uh, and especially if it's out of your hands and it's not, you're like, wow, hey, you know, I, I'm not sure if we're going to be impacted, but yeah, right. I know we have this big bill, this invoice that's due on Tuesday, and I'm not sure what's going to happen on Monday or whatever. Being proactive is, is uh, you know, very, very important. Of course, you should build up cash reserves when times are good and leave it alone. It's one of the hardest things for me that I always struggled with because I thought I could turn that cash into more money, um, but that's short-term thinking. Um, yeah, yeah when, I mean, th there's... <sighs> I think there's a balance there. There is. Uh, you yeah. have to be conservative with uh, some of your cash. And and the way I look at that is I look at what are my receivables over the next, you know, 30, 60, 90 days? Yes. What are my expense, my predicted expenses over the next 30, 60, 90 days? Okay. I, yeah. You know, I like to have cash on hand for some version of those 30, 60, 90 uh, of expenses, even though I know that my receivables are likely to cover them. Right. Yes. I, I, yeah. I, I am always looking at least 60 days out and saying, I have cash on hand. I am most comfortable when I can say I have cash on hand to cover 60 days or even 90 days of expenses, even if the, the receivables well dries up yeah. or gets delayed. Yeah. Right. Yep. Now, we're, it, this is good timing because we're going to, on Friday, we're going to do a, a cash flow episode, which, yeah. which you, you don't want to miss. But like, I always just called it payroll cash. The, my most important asset was my people. Yes. And I had to have enough coverage, like you said, 30, 60, not whatever it is, to make sure everybody got paid. Because if they're not there, the business doesn't work. Correct. Um, you know, and when times are good, you know, Look at increasing your lines of credit it, with maybe a different bank than you, you know, maybe one of the big fours, maybe it's a B of A or a Wells Fargo, you get a line of credit. If you're a new business and you can't get a business line of credit, maybe you get a home equity line of credit if you own a house. Um, those are very cheap, as you know, but they were very inexpensive. Uh, I know they've you know gone up a little bit, but a uh, little, but uh, if uh, things, yeah, it doesn't matter deal. if things are good and you're. And when we say good, meaning you you don't need to borrow money today, Correct. that's that's why today is the best day to go get a, a business line of credit or some kind of line yep. of credit. They aren't gonna they are going to be less likely to give you that line of credit if you ask for it the day that you need it. No, it so it just won't happen. It's yeah. not and if happen. you're in a rush and right. you if you sound I gotta have it this week or, yeah. or two ten days. What happens is you wind up going to other places that are far more expensive. Like uh you know uh, you could have purchase order uh financing, which yeah. is you know, it, it works and it's I've done it, but it's very expensive. Um you can do lots of different things um uh, you know, in an emergency. But the the one thing I'll say about a line of credit, once you get it, you do need to draw it down. Even if you don't use it, you could draw it down and pay it back in a week or two. Yeah. Because when it comes time, I've had this happen where the bank would be like, when it's time to renew, they say, well, you didn't really use it. So we're just not going to renew it this time. 
You don't mm. want that to happen. You want to pull it out, at, you know, one or t- two times a year, you know, at some level, pay it back, you know, even if you just do it in a week so you don't have, you know, much interest. But the bank wants to see the outflow. The bank wants to have a relationship with you that they can make a couple of percentage points. And if the bank doesn't is not able to make, let's say, two points on you overall, on your overall relationship, they're not going to be as motivated to to help you out. And yeah. so you want to... Th- you want to let them make money. So um, if you get in a real pinch, you know, I don't, I don't recommend this, but if you, I've done it when I've really in a pinch with a business, you could sell a big asset to somebody, you know, and buy it back. If you, you know, with tell, Hey, I'm going to sell it to you and buy it back oh, within 30 days, buy it back within 60 days, whether that's, I've sold all the, the racking systems in my warehouse to somebody that I, when I needed money many, many, many years ago. Uh, and then I bought it back, you know, 20 days later. Uh, there's, there's lots of ways you can, you can do this again. You have to get creative, but you don't want to find yourself in that position. And if no, you that sounds up, like a move of yeah. desperation. Oh, yeah. it's definitely a desperate <laughs> move, but it's, it's, it's like, okay, you know, I'm, uh, again, payroll money. If, if you, yeah. you got to keep everything doing. So, uh, I'd love to hear if you've been impacted by any of this stuff that's going on. Let's let's uh, hope that that things stay, uh, st- you know, or stabilize a little bit. I think Stable-ish. we're headed for some some rough uh, patches here, as I've I mean, been talking think, about for the last year. I think we're but, seeing those rough patches. We so are. This is yeah. that's what this is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we are. We yeah. are. So uh, feedback at businessbrain.show. Tell us, uh, you know. Uh, talk about your relationship with banks tips that you recommend we'll share them on the show and if we share them we'll enter you to win a macbook air that we're giving away this year absolutely yeah that's feedback at businessbrain.show and we want to hear from you folks hey do me a favor keep living that charm life will you we'll see you next time